Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at the Zeiss Traveling Telescope. This telescope uh, dates from 1927 or so. We can establish that using the serial numbers. And it is a wonderful telescope. Of course, it's a Zeiss Premium Optics. It also has some very interesting, quirky, idiosyncratic features. Wonderful, charming telescope. This is a 60 millimeter telescope. Uh, with a focal length of 840 millimeters. It came originally stock with three eyepieces, a 21 power, 47 power, and a 94 power eyepiece. You could, of course, get uh, different eyepieces, additional supplementary eyepieces. It also came with a poro prism like this for straight through viewing, and it was really uh, designed for use straight through. I'll show you that in another segment. All right, let's open up this size. First of all, this has got to be one of the most robust cases you'll ever see. And how many times do you see a case with a lock? This has a lock and key. Put it there and open it up. What a deal, huh? Now here we have the entire telescope. Unless you have some spare accessories, in which case those might be Held separately but this is pretty much the whole thing <clears throat> here we have and this is on a, a specialized kind of a holding platform inside there this is the OTA and the Altaz mount here's a portal prism here are the legs slow motion controls all that stuff I wanted to show you how the legs are stored in here these are compressed so that what happens when you pull them out, they expand out. They wanted to give it a nice wide triangle here at the top where it attaches. But they compressed the wood. They took advantage of the flexibility to store it so it fits in there. By the way, there's some little rubber tips I put on here just so I can put this up in my house without scratching up the floor. But what's underneath there are some real nice sharp metal tips. This is how this works. Like that, slide this out, makes a nice long leg. Alright, here's some other things. Here's the tripod head. Everything is stored beautifully inside there. Uh, this, I'll show you this all mounted up. That's just the extension post to make the telescope sit up at a higher height. Let me show you a few interesting things about this tripod head. First of all, um, this is somewhat reconstructed. This part here, when I bought it, was not present. Uh, I had all of these other parts, everything was there, except for this, which I was able to make easy to fabricate something like that. And this is interesting because this is spring-loaded. Notice how there, there's something going on there. What happens is there's a bolt that passes through here and down underneath is a spring. So uh, that is as, that's as simple as it could possibly be. This pushes against the spring and the spring pushes back against it. That's how the azimuth slow motion works on this thing. Now, as far as the attachment of the tripod legs, I normally don't really like a tripod that comes apart at this particular point. But this one is extremely well made because of this notch. See the notch there? Um, you can slide this in one of the legs and it has a tendency to land in that notch and especially with gravity pushing down on it it's going to tend to lock that down into position. This is also of course this is ice so it's extremely robust, extremely well made. Let's have a look at some of the accessories for the Zeiss Traveling Telescope. This is a straight-through adapter. Uh, this particular example has the quick connect mechanism on it. And that's easy to remove. There's a, this little flange here. There's a screw that will lock this on. That has an M44 thread under there. And you can remove this little adapter here. This attaches to the telescope like that, right there, here's the tube. Matter of fact, let me show you. Let's pretend this is the back of the telescope. 
So it attaches to the back of the telescope. There's a little uh, uh, kind of a cam thing here. Now, if you want to change this accessory quickly, you put this in. It's got a, a bayonet kind of a deal. Lock it down. And now you're, got, you're good. You've got the straight through adapter, rotator, all that. And you can change that quickly with this. Say the poral prism. So now the poral prism is on there. You lock it down and you've got that set up. It's a little bit more simple than the, uh, screwing it on with the M44 threads. However, there's a deficiency, especially when you have another accessory. I happen to have a this is a, another one I came, uh, I bought much later, and it doesn't. I don't have the right flange for it. <laughs> and of course, I could take the flange off of this one, put it on that one, etc., etc. But um, it makes this a little less useful because I don't have all my accessories mounted to that. This is, of course, the poral prism. This is just a giant poral prism, a huge. I don't know. It's uh, got to be about an inch, maybe a little more inch um, visible clearance through there. This is just a straight through adapter, a tube. You can adapt any of the things like the, um, this is the low power eyepiece. This is the 21X eyepiece. It goes right on there. Any of this other stuff. It's just the standard M44 thread. <coughs> Here's an adapter. This is something I made. And of course they, I don't think they even, ex you know, inch and a quarter eyepieces didn't even exist. Uh, anyway, this is just a little simple inch and a quarter adapter. It was a chore to cut those threads. These are very specialized M44 threads, not like the standard N44s of modern times. So that's a, an oddball deal. This is the Zeiss Zenith Prism, uh, star diagonal in modern terminology. And this is, uh, of course, designed for the 965 eyepieces, like the ones that came with the Zeiss. This is the 47 power. Um, and this adapter here, this is of course a standard M44 thread here. I could, if I wanted to, use this. I have my special adapter, so I can use inch and a quarter eyepieces in there if I want to with this. Now, one of the special things about this, it's, it's huge. I don't know what that is. That's got to be inch and a half maybe I don't know it's gigantic anyway it's a huge beautiful prism but it's also got the unusual feature that it has this little screw on here and it rotates if you were to put this into the telescope or in this case the telescope extension tube you screw it on there now it's attached to the telescope it's got one and only one orientation and it, heaven help you if it's like that uh, well, you can loosen this, rotate this around to whatever position you might need. And then you can even lock it down if you want to, like that. So uh, that's the reason for that little bit of complexity. Now the scope was purposely designed to be a terrestrial telescope. So you look through it like so. You have a little slow motion here, a little slow motion there, like that. Uh, and they advertised for use on your country estate. So uh, first you buy a country estate, then you get a Zeiss telescope to go on it. In addition to being used as a terrestrial telescope, you could, of course, use this as a, an astronomical telescope. Uh, by the way, this little device here is a locking mechanism, a really clever locking me mechanism. And you could balance the scope, depending on what accessories you have here and so forth, balance it and then tighten it down right here. Uh, so that's uh, pretty clever. This is a, a lock for altitude. There is a lock for azimuth down here also, although mostly probably wouldn't use that or just leave it kind of loose. And then you have your slow motion controls. So let's lock it down here a little bit, give it some friction both ways. Uh, if I want to use this for astronomy, they would have, in the olden days, apparently, you would use it straight through. Probably disengage, remove the poral prism. Apparently, back in the old days, a lot of people would observe astronomical objects straight through. So, in this case, you would need the extension tube. This thing, this draw tube, is nice and long, but not long enough 
to do the job. So you'd use the extension tube. I've got an eyepiece in here. I've got the low power eyepiece in here. I spend a lot of time literally screwing around with this telescope. Again, back in the 1920s, they had nothing but time on their hands. So now I think that would be focused right about in there. And of course you would want to balance it and so forth. Now you've got a, a straight through telescope and you would have looked straight at something. This is high enough. You can actually get this up quite a bit higher. So straight through observing would be quite feasible with something for something that's uh, not too high. However, if you really want to use this telescope and uh, properly for something near the zenith, you're going to want to have a star diagonal. So now we have a, a nice, I would consider this to be an astronomical telescope. It does have an Altaz mount, but it's a, it's a nice Altaz mount. It's got good slow motions. There you go. Let me show you some close-ups of how all of these things work. Here's a close-up look at the altitude slow motion control. You can see that I'm turning it. Now what happens when I turn it is an arm right here. This arm is attached to this bearing here. And of course there's a friction control here so you can lock it down better. Loosen it up so that it floats. Once you lock it down here it's locked to this thing. And now there's a spring in here with enough pressure to push it back and forth. Uh, it has to be balanced at least reasonably well. You can also remove this, loosen that, and then you have this, so you can use it just with fingertip control and do the same thing. Here's a look at the azimuth slow motion. And of course you can attach the extension cable here if you want. Check out the graduations in there. You can see it changing. It's even got a little vernier on there. Talk about overkill. What a deal. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the Zeiss Traveling Telescope. Thank you very much for watching.